so we are uh, moving on to section 12.7, talking about normal and tangential components. So you can imagine that for um, a particle that is traveling in a circle or in some sort of curved path, um, using our rigid horizontal vertical axes uh, may not be helpful because it, it keeps on changing. You know, the velocity in, the, in those axes are, are changing a lot. Uh, it turns out that it might be a lot more beneficial to define our axes instead of x and y axes, to define our axes as normal and tangential axes. Or maybe here's E normal. So that's a unit vector in the normal direction. Uh, and E tangential, a unit vector in the tangential direction. All right, so uh, the tangential direction is always uh, in the direction of the path, whatever the instantaneous velocity, wherever it's pointed, wherever it's heading instantaneously, the velocity, that would be the tangential direction, and into the curve would be the normal direction. So E tangential is a unit vector tangent to, to the path. So, you know, if, 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 if here's our path right here, you can see that the tangential direction is always tangent to the path. Everywhere tangent to the path. All right, and E normal is a unit vector normal to the path. Normal to normal to the path. Uh, and normal to the path, we're going to say, you know, normal, of course, is perpendicular. So perpendicular to the path. And so we're going to say this is always into the curvature. Into the curvature. All right, see how this normal direction is into this you know, concave uh, curvature. This is into the curve. But then when it, when it starts twisting this way, that would be into the curve. Now back this way, that would be into the curve. All right, so that's important to know that normal is always into the curve. Okay, so let's think about this. Because E tangential, because our unit vector in the tangential direction is defined as always tangent to the path, it is always in the direction of the velocity. Always in the direction of the velocity. So if we wanted to write the velocity as a vector, we would just say the velocity, all of its magnitude, is in the tangential direction, E tangential. And w wouldn't you agree that there is no component of the velocity in the normal direction. There is no velocity in the normal direction. Uh, so our velocity, you know, if we wanted to write velocity as a vector, it's, it's pretty simple. It's just whatever the speed is or whatever the magnitude of velocity is uh, in the tangential direction. But acceleration is a little bit more interesting. All right, so obviously acceleration is still the derivative of velocity, the time rate of change of the velocity vector. So let's take the derivative of this uh, velocity. All right, so we've got two things that are being multiplied to each other. Let's use the product rule. So the derivative of the first dv dt e tangential plus v times the derivative of the second, the time rate of change of ET, of the unit vector in the tangential direction. All right, first let's think about this term. This term is what we're used to. Uh, this is, you know, am I speeding up or slowing down, right? So this is speeding up, slowing down. You know, am I getting faster or slower? So this is the, you know, change in speed. And the direction, the direction of that 
uh, change in speed, speeding up or slowing down, is in the tangential direction. All right. So, so this is what we're used to. This is kind of like a, a 1D problem. You know, am I speeding up or slowing down in the direction that I'm going? Okay. So the first term is is pretty straightforward. That's our our normal speeding up or slowing down term. Now the second term, uh, it's velocity times the derivative of the unit vector in the tangential direction. Now, this is not zero. You know, ET could be changing. Right? The E tangential could be changing. If we look, you know, E tangential would be right here, E tangential would be right here. It, it's changing directions. It's not changing magnitudes because unit vector has magnitude of one. It could be changing directions, so, so it could be changing. All right, so let, let's just say this term is not zero. So what is it? And, and that's kind of what I'm, what I'm asking. What is this term right here, the time rate of change of the tangential um, unit vector? All right, well, let's start with the definition of an arc length. We know that this arc length right here, this distance s, is equal to rho, if we've got some radius type thing, times beta, the angle that, um, that s is, is traveling. All right, so that, that's the definition of an arc length. Uh, s is rho times beta. All right, so if we're traveling along this circular arc or this path, If we're traveling along this uh, circular path, our velocity would be the change in our velocity would be this change in s. Uh, velocity is the change in position with respect to time. Velocity is the change in position with respect to time. And I, instead of saying s, I'm going to say rho times beta. So instead of saying s, I'm going to associate that with rho times beta, where rho is the rate of curvature. Beta is the angle that we have traveled. And so taking the derivative of that, I again have to use the product rule. Let me take the derivative of the first times second plus first times the derivative of the second. All right, so for a very small distance that we're traveling, we're going to say that this... Uh, change in radius of curvature is very, very small. We're going to neglect it. We're going to assume it's zero. It's a higher order term. It is much, much smaller than this uh, term, the change in beta dt, the change in beta dt. So I'm going to neglect that first term. I'm going to say velocity is equal to rho d beta dt. Uh, and just, just a little bit of rearranging, divide that uh, rho on the other side. All right, here we go. d beta dt is velocity over radius of curvature. d beta dt is velocity over radius of curvature. So let's uh, consider the change in, so, so let, let's, let's kind of put this in our back pocket. We'll uh, use that later. Let's consider the change in the tangential unit vector over a very small angle d beta. So uh, right here, it was right here. Now it's right here. That's a very small change. So what is the change? What is the difference? Right? Change, I'm looking for the difference. So if I draw my usual, my, my beginning ET, and I draw the ET just a few, you know, fractions of a second afterwards, what is the difference? The difference is this little pink arrow right here this little pink um, arrow right here. So that is DET. That is DET. So going back to the definition of an arc length, this is kind of a, a, an arc, very small arc. Um, the arc is equal to the radius of curvature times d beta. The arc is the radius of curvature times d beta. Here the radius of curvature is 1. Both of those lengths are 1. They're unit vectors. 
So the magnitude of dE dt is d beta. The magnitude of dE dt is d beta. And so when I take the derivative of that, I'm just going to replace dET with d beta. So now I've got d beta dt. And I already knew and already solved that d beta dt was v over rho. So here we go, uh, uh, boxed in in pink. I just proved that the magnitude of the derivative of the tangential unit vector is v over rho. All right, so the magnitude of this term that, I, that I'm looking for, the magnitude of this term up here is v over rho. What about the direction? What is the direction of dE dt? Well, let me think about that. Consider that arc again. Um, what is the direction of this right here? The difference is that right there. For this very infinitesimally small difference, the direction of dE dt is perpendicular to the unit vector. The direction is perpendicular to the unit vector. This very, very small difference is perpendicular to both ET and ET prime because both of those are have a magnitude of 1. Um, and so that very small DET is perpendicular to the tangential direction. And what direction is perpendicular to the tangential direction? The normal direction. So I've answered two questions. The magnitude is V over rho. The direction is E normal. So DET, DT is V over rho, E normal. So let me go back to this right here. I just solved that the magnitude of this is V over rho and the direction is ET. So I'm going to plug this in for that term right there. And I'm going to rewrite my acceleration equation. So here, let me rewrite my acceleration equation. Acceleration is dv dt times et. That's the 1d speeding up or slowing down. Plus v times v over rho. And if you don't mind, I'm going to write that as v squared over rho. Right? v squared over rho in the normal direction. So this equation is true for a particle. For a particle traveling in a normal tangential path. That's true for a particle traveling in a normal tangential path. So this is, like I said, speeding up or slowing down, this is the tangential acceleration this v squared over rho is the normal acceleration. So, so you know, the, the acceleration in the tangential direction is, you know, am I speeding up or slowing down? This is kind of a, a 1D problem. Am I speeding up or slowing down? This uh, normal acceleration is always v squared over rho. So do you notice that even if uh, something is not speeding, Speeding up or slowing down. Let's say it's traveling at a constant, you know, 20 miles per hour. But if it's going around a curve, you know, it may not have tangential acceleration if it's not speeding up or slowing down. But it's still, as long as it has velocity, right? As long as it has velocity and as long as it ha has a curve to it, a radius of curvature then it's going to have some um, normal acceleration. It's going to have some normal acceleration of v squared over rho. As long as it's got a v, and as long as it's got a rho, it's got some normal acceleration. So uh, you know how I like to do things sometimes. I like to separate. I like to separate my um, 1D... Uh, speeding up and slowing down problem. And, and we're going to use what we use at the very beginning of this semester. We might use integrals 
uh, hey, maybe it's constant. If it's constant speeding up and slowing down, I can use some constant acceleration equations. So I'm going to separate that from my normal. My normal is, is just always v squared over rho, and it's always into the curve. Separate those. It's kind of two separate problems. Sometimes there is some carryover. There is some connection. Sometimes this velocity, you need to have solved it from the 1D part and carried it to the normal part, or vice versa. Uh, but I would separate them, and then at the end, if you need to, bring them back together.